Well, greetings in the name of Jesus. This is Joel Hitchcock, and I want to continue sharing with you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the speaking in other tongues. And we have a lot of great material. Go to www.joelhitchcock.blogspot.com or just joelhitchcock.com and uh, you will be able to see the materials that we have done before. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube and sharing about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Today I want to share uh, some insights regarding the uh, speaking in tongues, some things that are misunderstood, some misconceptions, but I want to touch on that and then believe God with you that you'll receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to show you a couple of things here that is very, very important. And I'm, a whole hang with me, please. We, we only have about four minutes left, and I, I really want you to listen to this, because this is an attack on those who operate in glossolalia. Glossolalia is a term uh, which means the speaking in tongues. So there's an attack on those who speak in tongues, and the attack is, if you really spoke in tongues, it would be a known language that, other, that somebody else can understand that you never learned. And accompanied with that statement, they say, tongues in the book of Acts was used to preach the gospel to people who did not understand their language, so they could hear the, the language in their own, they could hear the gospel in their own language. And I'm going to prove to you that that's completely wrong. Listen to what it says. And here's the topic, uh, the, the scripture in question. Acts 2 verse 5, after they received this baptism in the Holy Ghost, it says, they were speaking in tongues, then verse 5 says, and there were men dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. So they were all, you know, uh, Jews. And they were from every nation under heaven. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled and said to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galatians? How is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Now, th this gives the impression that the people who spoke in tongues were speaking in these language, Parthian, Mede, Elamite, Phrygian, Egyptian, Arabian, Cretan, whatever the language was that they were speaking. Uh, w but listen, here's the thing. The Bible does not say that they actually spoke in those languages. Because the emphasis is, and I'm hair splitting here, but it's a good point that we should remember. It says there in verse 8, how is it that we hear each in our own language? They don't say, how is it that they speak each in our own language? It could be that the miracle was in their ear, not in the in the speaking of those that they were hearing. It could be that they were just speaking in a language that they themselves or nobody understood, a heavenly language, but the hearers heard it in their language. I'll give you a testimony about that in one minute, but look again at verse 11. Christians and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues. Now, it could be that they were speaking in those tongues. I'm not negating that. I'm just saying it's not a close shut case that they were that, that they were definitely speaking in Arabian or whatever. It's not a close case because again it confirms that we hear them. I said I'm, I'm here splitting, but this is important. We hear them speaking. So it could be that the miracle was in their ear, not so much 
that they spoke a language that they understood. Let me give you a quick example. When I was in the country of Malawi, I was traveling with a, my interpreter. He spoke English uh, with me, but he spoke Chichewa, which was the language that they spoke. Long story made short, one morning early, we're sleeping in the church, out in the outback. We're sleeping, sleeping in the pastor's office. And then in the morning, I got up earlier and I went into the church. A man at that time, every time I preached, I, pr I prayed rather, I prayed loud and fervently, and I still do. But uh, back then, every, just about every prayer I prayed was fervent. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed in English. I prayed in Afrikaans, which is my mother language, and I also prayed in tongues. And my interpreter, perhaps woken up by my prayers, came in and joined me. And I remember him coming into the door at that moment. And I just kept on going. And I was speaking in tongues at that moment. Afterwards, at breakfast, he told me, you know, I finally understand, because he, he was really interested in the Afrikaans language. He wanted to know, how do you say this and how do you say that? But he said, I really under, I, I, I understand the words. I understand now. I, it was like, as if I understood. I said, what do you mean? He said, I could tell that you were praying for the interpreter, uh, the translator. You could pray for the, for the choir, that God would anoint them. And I said, I don't pray for those things. Um, he said, well, what was the language you prayed when I came into the door? I said, at that point, I was praying in tongues. And he said, well, that's where I understood what you were praying. He could not even explain it to me. But he could not understand the words, but he understood that I was praying for the choir and for the translator and things like that. So this is an example of where in modern times I have spoken tongues that he could not understand, neither could I understand it, but he understood the message. And it's as if he heard it, but it wasn't the tongue that I was speaking. The things of God are so glorious. God has not got everything neatly packaged so we could have them exactly like God is so glorious. He'll do things that amaze us, even more amazing than what I just told you about. Now, it could be that they also did speak in tongues uh, that people understood. And I'll give you another example. Remember my uncle that was praying, that got the baptism in the Holy Spirit that I told you in one of the previous sessions? One day... After that glorious outpouring that he experienced, go back to the other session, you'll understand if you, you might remember. I mean, he really had an experience with God. And after that experience, he, you know, eventually the emotion of it died down. The power was still there, but you see the emotion always, you can't build it on emotion. You can't base it on emotion. And in his mind, he started doubting, was that really God? And one day he was in his house his parents' house, and he was singing in other tongues, and there was a maid working in the kitchen, and Uncle John, he was still a young man of 20-something, and he, he was singing in tongues and praising his name, and, and after he uh, spoke to her later, she said, you know, uh, where did you hear, learn that song? He said, um, why, why, what do you mean? She says, that is the song in my language. I'm from Zambia. And this is the song that we sing in Zambia. He said, what did I sing? She said, you were singing about, let's go down to the river and, and be baptized and worship God, things like that. And here's Uncle John in a state of perhaps little doubt whether the experience and the tongue was really real, because I tell you, the devil will bring doubt in your life, but don't listen to him, listen to God's word. And remember what God did in your life. Can somebody say amen? But with that doubt in his mind, he just broke through it and he praised his holy name and he sang in tongues and blessed the name of the Lord. And somebody, without him knowing it, understood the language that he was speaking. You know what? I'm going to totally refute this whole conception, concept that tongues is there to preach the gospel so that those 
people such as the Elamites and the Medes and the Parthians and the Cappadocians and the Judeans and the Libyans and the Cyrenes and Christians and Arabs and the whole bunch of them could understand the gospel message and give their lives to Jesus. Let's see if that is true. The Bible says that they were speaking in tongues. Again, it might have just been a miracle in their ear or perhaps it was the actual language that they heard that. But it says, verse 12, so they were all amazed and perplexed and said one to another, what could this mean? Others mocking said, they are full of new wine. Now watch. But Peter, are you listening? But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all that dwell in Jerusalem. And he began to speak to them, not in tongues, but in the language that they understood. They perhaps understood all of them Aramaic, because that was the Jews' language at the time. Maybe it was Hebrew. Um, I don't know if Peter spoke any Greek, but at least Aramaic and Hebrew. And he spoke to these Jews who understood that language. Listen, when he preached the gospel to them, he spoke to them in the equivalent of English to English people, or the equivalent of Spanish to Spanish people, or the equivalent of Afrikaans to Afrikaans speaking people. He spoke to them the equivalent of Russian to Russian people. In this case, then do Russian or Afrikaans. They spoke Aramaic or Hebrew. And after Paul, I mean Peter and his, and his friends, the fellow disciples, were praying in tongues and God did that. When it was time to preach the gospel, he did not preach to them in tongues. He preached to them in the language they understood. I close with this by saying, listen, don't let anybody tell you real tongues are tongues that others understand so we can preach the gospel to people who don't understand English. That's not true at all because the very verse that they used to say that this is what they did, they spoke in tongues to preach the gospel to other people, when we read it, it's the opposite. They spoke in tongues to God. They declared the works of God. And, and but when it came to preaching the gospel, they switched to the language they could understand. All right. Uh, praise God. Isn't this wonderful teaching? And if you think you've heard something, you've heard nothing yet, continue to listen to us in our next session. Catch up on the other ones. Perhaps watch them one or two more times. But I'm going to pray for you in Jesus' name that God will give you the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the accompanying gift of speaking in other tongues. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty, holy name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you so much for this moment that we have to pause and ask you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the teaching that has come from your word. And I ask you, mighty Jesus, that we will hear what the Spirit would say unto us and that we will base it on your word, not man's opinion, but upon your word. And God, I ask you, bring us the baptism of the Holy Spirit. As that song says, send it on down, send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. We pray, send the fire. Send the Holy Ghost fire. Pour out your spirit. Let the fire fall and do something in our midst that no man can deny. And I pray for my brother and my sister that you fall on them right now. They don't have to wait for my final teaching to receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost with the accompanying speaking in other tongues. In the name of Jesus, I say unto you, brother, I say unto you, sister, receive. We're going to take 30 seconds here and ask God to fill you with the Spirit. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, fill my brother, fill my sister. Let the tongue come forth. Come on, let that tongue come forth. You don't even need someone to lay hands on you. God can do it right now, right now. Yes, God, fill them with your Spirit in Jesus' name.
I pray for you now in the name of Jesus that you receive that in the name of the Lord. Fill my brother that you fill my friend right now. Come on, let that tongue come forth. Let that tongue come forth. Hallelujah, Lord. Fill and refill. Baptize and re-baptize my brother and my sister with the Holy Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen. God bless you. Hi, this is Joel Hitchcock again, and I want to ask you to like this video, comment on the video if you will. Also subscribe to my channel, www.youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Joel Hitchcock. Also go to my blog, www.joelhitchcock.blogspot.com and follow my blog if you will. I greatly appreciate it. God bless you and looking forward to talk to you next time.